Hello my fellow family foodie friends, it is Jackie and today I'm going to share with you another favorite holiday recipe. So the holidays are special for a lot of reasons and one of them is you get to do things and eat things and see people that you don't see on a regular basis, am I right? You don't get to open presents every day, you don't get to see great aunt Sally every day, and you certainly don't get to eat green bean casserole every day. This is part of an open collaboration for Thanksgiving recipes hosted by Amanda, Stephanie, and Missy. And if you like food and you like Thanksgiving, you're going to want to check out the playlist listed below and these lovely ladies' channels. Green bean casserole is without a doubt my favorite Thanksgiving food because I only eat it on Thanksgiving every single year, except for this year because I made it early so I could film it for you. I love green bean casserole. It is something that my mom made every single year. She still makes it to take to my grandma's and I love my mom's green bean casserole. However, once I became an adult and I started going to Thanksgiving potlucks, it is something that I chose to take as well. But I personally really don't like mushrooms. I also don't like it when people use any other green bean besides French style green beans because my mom made it that way. So I took it upon myself to take it to potlucks and I'm specifically thinking of my old workplace. We would have a Thanksgiving potluck every year and I had a coworker that had a gluten intolerance and all of the Campbell soup mixes have gluten in them. So I decided to start making it from scratch and I just did whatever sounded good to me and it was delicious. It still is delicious and that's what I'm going to share with you today. How I make my green bean casserole from scratch. Except for the onion crispers because I ain't getting away from that. So here are the all-star lineup for this recipe. I have whipping cream, parmesan, bacon, butter, garlic, French style green beans, and the french fried onions. I'm starting with the bacon. I have leftover bacon from a breakfast. I tend to do this when I have a bacon in a recipe. I'll also make breakfast for dinner that week so I can get dual use out of a pound of bacon. And I'm just frying up my leftovers or you could fry it right away in the pan. I'm chopping an entire onion and I'm gonna add that right to the bacon and the bacon grease. This recipe will be linked down below and typed out with exact measurements. That's a tablespoon of minced garlic. I am just getting all the aromatics going in my kitchen, making myself hungry. There's three tablespoons of butter added to that, and it smells amazing at this point. I am adding in two cups of grated Parmesan, that's almost an entire container, and then I'm adding in three cups of heavy whipping cream and mixing it all together. I'm going to let this go at a slow boil barely bubbling. It's going to get it nice and thick and while that's going I am just draining my six green bean cans. Again, this must be French style green beans. And once my base is nice and thick I am adding in the green beans. I'm going to toss them around to coat them. You don't need to do any cooking here because you're going to stick it right in the oven but I just want to get it nice and coated. I have a small little dish there that I removed some of the green beans so that I can cook some of it without the French onion toppers if I did need to have someone have a gluten-free version. And then I'm adding an entire bag of these French onion toppers. In my opinion, those are so good they're not even worth trying to make my homemade version because I just love them. I could eat those as if they were a bag of chips. And I hope I'm not alone and if I am there is still no shame because they are good. I pop these into a preheated oven at 350 degrees for about 30 minutes and once they're bubbling I just remove the foil and cook for 10 more minutes just to get a nice brown on top and again you can see the sides are bubbling here that's how you know it's done everything is already cooked so as long as it's baked and browned it's going to be good and I'm just giving you a nice visual of the side it's super creamy and this is Perfect to put in with a scoop of mashed potatoes, gravy, turkey. I am a food mixer and this is perfect on Thanksgiving Day. So if you're looking for Thanksgiving meals and that looked good to you, I bet you'd really like my Instant Pot Thanksgiving dinner turkey. It is so easy. I've made this on Easter. I've made it just to have it here at my house and it is delicious. So I hope that you enjoy and click right here to see how I make a turkey breast right in my Instant Pot. Chow down and chow.